My brother told me that Joseph Smith had married other men's wives and even a 14-year-old girl. I couldn't believe it. He showed me an article from the church's own website that confirmed that it was true. What else did I not know about my own religion? I decided that I needed to know for myself. Finding reliable information about the church's early history was difficult. The church had kept much of its records restricted from public view in its archives and even excommunicated historians who wrote about what they found there. I shared my concerns with my wife and she didn't know what to make of it either. Many of the things previously considered anti-Mormon were now being published on the church's own website. Other issues caused even more confusion. The Book of Mormon had anachronisms and included errors from the King James translators. Joseph Smith's translations of the facsimiles from the Book of Abraham were completely wrong. Prophets had taught vile, racist things as the Word of God for years. None of it made sense until I considered the possibility that Joseph Smith was not who he claimed to be. And then everything made sense. People with faith in other religious leaders, such as Christian scientists following Mary Baker Eddy, discover the deception and escape. I was no different. I shared with my wife where my search for truth had led me, but she had already talked to the bishop, and he had suggested that she may have to leave me if I left the church. He told her that my search was a prideful attempt to prove myself better than the leaders of the church and that I had been deceived by Satan. I loved my family, and I only wanted to live a life of integrity. But after speaking with church leaders, my wife decided that she could no longer see a future with me in it. My search for truth had cost me what I valued above all. My children couldn't understand why the bishop and stake president would tell their mother to choose the church over their father. As I drove away, my wife remembered that the same qualities that she liked in me, honesty, sincerity, and integrity, were what drove my search for the truth. She decided that if those qualities could lead somebody to question the church, that she should find out for herself. She started by actually reading the revelation on polygamy in Doctrine and Covenants section 132. She'd never actually read it before. She went on to read the gospel topic essays on race in the priesthood, the translation of the Book of Abraham, polygamy in Nauvoo and Kirtland. She began to understand why I could not accept that God would allow such things to happen. She couldn't either. When she finally accepted that Joseph Smith was not who he claimed to be, she got her family back. We didn't have to worry about polygamy in the eternities. We didn't have to worry about limiting the choices that our daughters would have when they would grow up. We could be good people and treat others with love, dignity, and respect without having to subject ourselves to the will of men who would teach bigotry and hatred under the guise of the will of God. We didn't have to come up with excuses for polygamy, for racism, for hatred towards gay men and women, because we knew they were wrong. Without having to attend meetings, we had more time as a family. Sundays became the best day of the week rather than the most stressed. Without having to pay tithing, we could save for college for our daughters. Most importantly, we could live authentic lives without deception or fear dictating our choices.